What you see here is my tiny GS ground station, which collects data from LoRa satellites, uh, low Earth orbit LoRa satellites. Hi, and welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. I'm Morton, LB0 Fox India. And today we're going to take a look uh, at what a tiny GS LoRa ground station is how you set it up, how it works, and what you can do with it. So uh, hang on and we'll get right to it. So let's get the first question out of the way first. What can you do with a LoRa ground station and why should you have one? The short answer for the latter question here is because you can. And then we get to what you can do with it. Well, it's pretty simple. It's an ESP32 LoRa board that collects data from uh, low Earth orbit LoRa satellites. And that's what it does. It maps out how many packages you've received. It maps out where you, you have heard the satellites. And it maps out which satellites you've heard. And that's about it. This does not collect data for, let's say, your use. It collects data for the satellite owner's use. But it's... It's a fun little project. It doesn't cost a lot to set up. And it's it's something to do on a rainy day, on an icy day, a snowy day, just to have a radio-related project. So first of all, let's take a look at what my station is. And my station is set up with one of these LoRa 32 boards from uh, Lilligo. The board is about 15 US dollars, so it won't break the bank to set it up. And that is connected to a uh, V dipole made entirely out of clothes hangers so uh, it doesn't cost a lot I've just put this up in my attic as you can see from the pictures I got here but how do you set one of these ground stations up well it turns out that I have one of these spare LoRa boards this is a t-beam because I had some ambitions of getting LoRa APRS up and working in Norway. But it turns out that the LoRa bandwidth is about four times as wide as is allowed on uh, 70 centimeters in Norway. So I had to lay the LoRa APRS project dead. And well, you gotta use the hardware you got for something. So inside this nice pink 3D printed box, there's a T-beam from Lilligo. And um, I can show you how easy it is to install the uh, tiny GS firmware on one of these boards. So I've taken the board out of uh, the box here just to show you. And uh, simple board. This one has a battery, so you can actually run it, let's say, from solar somewhere. Um, just got a USB solar adapter, and uh, you'll have a battery backup for when you don't have any sun. But... Um, Let's take a look at how you flash this. What we have here is the tiny ground station web page. And uh, let's zoom out a little bit. You can see the satellites here and you can see all the ground stations that are up and running all through the world. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit, we can find my ground station here. Let's just click on that first. And you can see my ground station has been up for a little while, as you saw in the intro picture as well. So there are some, some satellites here that have been received. You can see over here, uh, the package is received by day. And there's a bit of a globe here where you can see when the satellites pass. And then you go down here and you see the satellites you've received data from. And you can see the hexadecimal view of the packages that you have received. You can see some telemetry data from the uh, satellites. And um, that's pretty much it. So there, there's no practical use for this from a user perspective. But it's, let's call it, it's a fun thing to do and it's fun to experiment with RF. If we go back here though, we're gonna talk about how to install this. Let's go down here a little bit. If you go to the GitHub page here, you get a little bit more information. You can see here which boards that are supported. And um, as you can see, there are a lot of different LoRa boards here. Uh, what I'm using for my ground station, which is up and running, 
um, is the TTGO LoRa 32 version 2, and it's the 433 MHz version. Uh, what I'm going to use for the example here is the T-Beam version 1, which uh, I showed you on the desk. So in order to install this, there's a one-click uploader here, uh, which is for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. What you do here, and I'm going to show you in a minute, you download this, you plug in your board, you choose the COM port, and you press upload. So let's do that in real time and uh, you'll see how easy it is. And here we are with the tiny GS uploader uh, started up. It's selected with the right COM port here and you got to run this as an administrator. I don't know why uh, because I have not been able to make it connect to the board if it's not run as an administrator. Uh, but it's really simple. Click this big blue upload tiny GS firmware button. Another window pops up, as you can see here, where it starts erasing the firmware. It takes a couple of minutes, or not, not really a couple of minutes either. It takes about a minute and a half, I guess. Then it starts writing to the uh, tiny GS. And uh, we'll just speed it up now so you don't have to wait for it. And once it's done, uh, and I've looked at the messages on my phone and everything, um, the card reboots. And let's go over to the overhead cam and take a look. If we take a look here, no, it's a little bit hard to see, but on the tiny display here, it says uh, connect to access points, my tiny GS, and to configure station. And then it gives an IP address. So what you do, as a, this little card now sets up as a Wi-Fi hotspot. Connect to that network called MyTinyGS. Go to 192.168.4.1 and um, just configure your network. And we're going to hop over and see what this looks like here. And as you can see here, we're at my local network. And this is actually my ground station. But uh, it's the same setup nonetheless. I'm just going to show you what you'll... Will be greeted with after logging into the access point of your LoRa board is this little page here. Go to the configure parameters uh, tab here. Then you set your ground station name. Uh, you set a password for the dashboard. The user is always admin. Enter your Wi Fi network, your Wi Fi password. Set your latitude and longitude here, your time zone, and then it's the bit that's a little bit, little bit sketchy here, um, because you have your MQTT credentials, and in order to get these, you have to go to, uh, you have to go to Telegram, and um, I am no big fan of Telegram, and um, I was a bit hesitative to actually make a Telegram account and get this up and running, but I did made the account, got my credentials, and um, that's probably all I'm gonna do with Telegram. And Telegram will ask you to upload your contacts onto, onto their super secret encrypted database. And you should answer no to that pretty much. But um, it's up to you to decide if you wanna use Telegram or not. But it's a requirement to do this. And in order to get the MQTT credentials, uh, when you've joined the Telegram group for TinyGS, you send a message to the TinyGS personal bot and it's at TinyGS underscore personal underscore bot and you type slash MQTT. Then you'll get a message with your credentials. And uh, that is pretty much it. You get your credentials, you enter those, and after you've done that, you delete your Telegram app uh, just to keep it from leaking data. Just leave everything else as it, you see it here and you press apply on the bottom of the screen. And that's it. You're up and running with your tiny GS. So uh, let's go back here and uh, take a look at my dashboard. 
because the dashboard shows a little bit of information that you're up and running. Uh, it shows where it's listened, which satellites it's listening for, and uh, the last package received. And then there's a terminal vin window here where it shows what's happening. That's about it. The real magic happens here over at tinygs.com where you go in, find your ground station, click on it. And as we showed in the beginning of the video, you get all this data. And that is actually it. There's no practical use for the end user for this, but it's radio and it's fun. So why not do it if you have a couple of hours to spare and you're not scared off by doing Telegram. And that is a Sunday project for a rainy and icy Sunday. It's a summer vacation project. It's a Christmas project. It's for one of those ham radio days where you want to play radio, the bands are dead. You know what it is. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Morton, LB0 Fox India. You're watching LB0 Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. I'd really appreciate it if you click that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, consider subscribing, all of that. And um, if you want to leave me a tip, there are a couple of options down below. Until next time, my friends, 7 3.